think we have to recognize that risks are not isolated from one another. Every risk that draws on our capacity to respond draws down the ability to respond to the next one. So I think what the report is showing is that uh, risks are more interdependent than they have been, but given our weakened financial resilience, they're, they're even more interdependent than before. One step both business and government leaders can take is to appoint a chief risk officer. In the corporate sector, chief risk officers can have responsibility for looking comprehensively across the set of risks that an enterprise faces. In the government, a country risk officer could be appointed with a similar responsibility to look across all of the extreme events and risks that a country might face and develop a multidisciplinary, multi-department approach to how uh, a coordinated response, if you will, uh, to these risks. And in fact, if both sectors go down this path, these chief risk officers and country risk officers could work with one another to help build public-private partnerships for looking at uh, risks that span both the public and private sector. Well, with respect to natural catastrophes, I think governments should recognize that they're underwriting risk much as an insurance company does and should look for mechanisms where they might be able to privatize some of the risk and therefore move it off their books and into the private sector or in other cases to bring the modeling and analytical techniques used by the insurance sector to quantify their risk more fully and perhaps reinsure them out to private markets. So I think it's is sort of recognizing that they only have a certain amount of capacity to respond and making sure that the risks that they're underwriting are within that capacity. I think a different angle on this uh, that the public sector could take is to invest in infrastructure that helps to mitigate the risk. And therein it's looking at public-private partnerships which can make this investment and bringing in investors who haven't been traditionally involved in infrastructure, but which actually have the long-term funds that infrastructure project needs. So I think looking for ways to engage different parts of the, of the capital markets sector into infrastructure together with the government is another way forward here.